Hi guys, uh, Liam from Lantern are back with another IB Geography video uh, and this one is on a brand new topic for the new Geography syllabus, um, megacities. And as always on this first slide, um, I've just got the uh, the bullet point from the syllabus um, on exactly what we need to be covering um, to understand and, and to get the marks we need for this particular topic. And the IB tells us we just need to look at the consequences of megacity growth for individuals and societies. It wants us to talk about a, a particular case study um, in this particular video, I'm not going to dive into one. I'm sure you guys have, um, I've covered one in class before. I'm just going to go over um, some general ideas that you guys can absolutely take and apply to those examples that I'm sure you're covering um, in class and with your teachers um, at school. Cool. Um, let's kick it off by talking about what a mega city actually is. Uh, and by definition, it's a population or a city with a population of more than 10 million people. And in this diagram here, this is the most kind of up to date. Um, version. I'm just listing um, all of those countries around the world that have either um, 10 to 15 million people, that's yellow, 16 to 19 million people, and um, that's orange, or 20 to 37 million uh, people, and that's in red. I'm going to move my face for a second, you guys can check it out. Um, most notably are those red ones, right? So that's your Tokyo, um, your, your Mumbai, your Delhi, um, your Mexico City, and your Sao Paulo. Of course, there might be some uh, differences now. There might be some yellows that are now orange or some oranges that might be pushing into that red. Population, as we know, is a, is a mobile dynamic thing. Um, but just overall, you can show there's a, a massive distribution of these um, mega cities and they're becoming more and more prevalent. And the reason a mega city kind of forms is, is primarily due to um, a mass movement in terms of rural to urban migration. OK, that's people um, who are city dwellers. I'm sorry, rather um, rural dwellers who move to a city um, for a particular reason or because they've been pushed. Um, you guys might have uh, had a look at Lee's theory, that's the push-pull theory. Okay, what's meaning or making people leave? What's the pushing factor and what's actually attracting them to city life? And I just want to look now in terms of some of the consequences you guys can think about um, and use um, when you're answering an essay question perhaps um, on this topic. And um, what are the, the kind of pros and cons for the urban area, the rural area? And then we're going to talk a little bit later about the consequences for individuals um, and um, society kind of more generally. But let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the cities first. OK, so what are the advantages of having a large amount of people from rural areas moving into a particular city, a particular met mega city? Well, there's more workers. Um, that's great. OK, particularly if there are jobs available for them. Um, and a lot of these individuals will fill um, those low paid jobs, those jobs at the bottom of the, of the of the ladder and that just tends to be the case High, higher skilled jobs tend to um, agglomerate in, in the city structures already and um, so some of that of course some of that rural migration will be um, there to fill, fill some of that but predominantly it'll be the kind of lower skilled work um, that will be um, benefited by having more of a labor force there available to fill those vacancies the second is a better control of population and that's more to do with kind of bureaucracy and being able to um, provide government services and um, that's the third point there as well if you have people in the city it's easier to provide um, the necessary infrastructure and transport links that you need or they need to fulfill um, a fulfilling life and then finally we've got a chance to access better education again linked to infrastructure um, but there are, there are more options for education um, in cities and that might benefit a population too okay the disadvantages there's a number of them um, first and foremost congestion okay Congestion is just the over kind of crowding of spaces, particularly in terms of um, roads. And we've got this urban sprawl. We'll talk a little bit more detail about what that means. Um, and we might mention the term gentrification, which you guys uh, I'm sure have heard of before. But that's a really interesting point and debate to have about um, the pros and cons of rural urban migration and, and thus the pros and cons of a, a mega city um, space. And the third point is pollution. Um, that's getting a lot of um, attention in the media recently. We've seen a lot more um, talk about trying to reduce um, urban pollution. Obviously, if you have more people in a city, okay, there's going to be more chance of, of creating pollution, not just through um, car use, but using resources in that space, particularly types of, of factory jobs maybe um, outside of the CBD also contribute to pollution. Um, we mentioned there might be a better chance okay, at getting or accessing a better education but there is a possible overcrowding, so you might not even get the opportunity to fulfill that potential that you might have seen grow as a result of that movement because of an overcrowding uh, and, um, and, and a large demand on the healthcare, education, social care systems. 
there could be um, higher unemployment, okay? The benefit of that rural to urban migration in terms of employment tends to depend on whether there are vacancies available for, um, for people to fill. There are more pressure on amenities and then possibly more crime as well. Again, these are just some general ideas. As I mentioned in that geography essay video, if you guys can attach a particular example um, to some of these points, that's only going to elevate um, your essay writing, your answers. So you might have that central megacity um, case study. Of course, some of those points will be associated directly with that megacity. But obviously, you can talk about your own city if you like. Cities you've heard about. I'm living in London. A lot of these points are acutely relevant um, to my living space. And again, my local kind of environment. Therefore, maybe I use them as an example to supplement that case study I've been covering in class. Let's move on. Let's talk about um, the advantages and disadvantages for those rural areas when they see those city dwellers um, or those those um, ex rural dwellers move and become city dwellers. Okay, so some advantages, um, well, possibly a reduced unemployment rate. Okay, there might be free, freeing up um, potential vacancies for people who weren't able to um, access jobs before. Um, again, kind of the opposite of the um, the uh, disadvantages of being in the city. There's going to be less pressure on some of those services, and they may even benefit from remittances. Remittances, you remember, um, is defined as some kind of money sent back um, to support families or loved ones in a another area. Maybe the head of the family and the parents, the mother and father, or just one of them moves to the city. Okay, the rural part of that family um, may benefit from remittances that they send. Those monetary payments um, could help them support um, the household without some of them having to go and work even. Okay, and then we'll talk about some of those disadvantages for those rural areas where there may actually be a shortage of workers. And um, there's a, a theory, I, I forget the name, but it tends to be um, those kind of highest skilled young people that, that move away from rural areas to pursue opportunities in the cities. And actually those individuals might have been really valuable to that local economic activity, to that local area, had they stayed. There may also be an increased dependency ratio that's intimately linked to the idea of, of more unemployment if there is a less economically active population okay will they be able to provide um, the time the resources for those dependents in that community and of course there may be a separation of families particularly in some of those uh, mega cities we we, we looked at um, in, in more um, in, in in countries that are maybe kind of further down in the um, levels of development um, by traditional uh, measurement that is more of an issue Okay, there tends to be um, a separation of families, at least in the first case, the, the family may move afterwards, but there tends to be a um, initial separation when this rural urban migration um, is undertaken. Okay, so what are those consequences of megacities for individuals and for societies? Well, first, we just need to know okay, how important megacities are. In, a, in 2014, um, according to the United Nations, 60% of world GDP um, was concentrated in cities, in particular, 600 cities. London, on a, on a more local scale, if we're talking just in terms of the UK, um, accounts for half of the UK's GDP, half of the UK's gross domestic product, and that's a massive statistic. Um, London doesn't hold anywhere near okay, 50% of um, the UK's population. I think it must be around 20, 25% possibly, but it obviously accounts for a much higher um, kind of weight in terms of the um, economic value of the city. They're obviously in interconnected and um, there's an axis across. It used to be um, New York, London um, and, and Hong Kong. Um, more recently, though, that's become a, a little bit more spatially, uh, uh, I suppose, more complicated as we've got these kind of global nodes that are separated um, in, in um, okay, less of a uniform way. We saw earlier there's over 20 megacities now, okay, but they all, despite their... Um, geographic distance retain a, a high amount of interconnectivity business tends to be conducted in these mega cities they're very well connected um, as a result of particularly uh, like airlines and technology more generally and they're even more important now cities are the homes of services okay that's the, the kind of tertiary um, sector of an economy as an economy or a country moves through and develops okay it goes from the agriculture to manufacturing to tertiary and as more and more countries um, see their service sector increase cities and mega cities become more important for them these are just a, a kind of a few more issues to consider um, in terms of not just the process of rural urban migration 
but just some of those big issues that mega cities are facing at the moment. And the first is sustainability. And that's particularly relevant not only just for the environmental side of things, yeah, but actually being able to provide the resources, the services that everybody in the population requires within that kind of city space. Um, linked to that, there may well be a housing shortage. There might not have been enough houses to go around, um, but maybe that's not the issue. It might be affordability. And I mentioned I was living in London. This is a big issue for young people moving into the city because there is such a demand. If you guys are doing economics, you know there's that um, supply demand intersection. As we did kind of demand something more, prices tend to be positively inflated. Again, that affects young people like me, people who are wanting to move into the city. But because there is such a lot of people living there, okay, prices are artificially inflated. Um, okay, link to that, there may be then this development of informal housing or rundown areas. That's prevalent in almost every city um, in the world. But as those mega cities grow, that issue can um, become larger. And I know in London, there's a big issue now in terms of um, squatting. That's intimately linked with that. If there's no houses available that are affordable, there's going to be this informal side of, um, of business um, with regards to finding housing um, that is suitable for uh, living in a, in a mega city or, or, or a city area. And the final one is, oh, in terms of um, space, is congestion. And uh, we mentioned that earlier. That's why public transport and a sophisticated public transport system is now very high on the agenda for a lot of these mega cities to avoid the environmental and the social issues um, that come with congestion. Cool. Um, in fact, in, in uh, the UK, France, Germany, and the US, the cost of congestion is around $200 billion. It's a massive financial issue um, for productivity, for making sure that you are able to make as much money within the city as possible. People need to get to work, need to get on work on time. Therefore, reducing the issue of congestion is very important. Pollution as well, that's linked, um, but that's definitely an issue in, in a number of um, number of mega cities. I know, in fact, that just by university for me, is the most polluted road um, in London. That's had a massive, uh, that's been a, a massive issue for um, the local people working in the area, for the students, but it's a bigger issue now in terms of the knock-on effects in terms of health and then putting increased pressure on um, on services that are already um, strained by the urban kind of growth that um, big cities um, are undergoing. The urban sprawl and then this gentrification. So the gentrification is again linked to affordability but it's that phenomenon where um, people who are living in an area can no longer um, afford to um, remain there because there are um, more wealthy individuals that are willing to pay more to, to kind of buy the houses around them. Okay, so this is this um, an almost class related battle whereby people are living in an area they can no longer afford to based on the, you know, the, um, uh, the impact of a financial investor or, or, or kind of more wealthy young professionals who are wanting to live in an area uh, that changes the social fabric that has a big ish, kind of big impact culturally that has a bigger impact than just the financial side of things and again that's a big issue for uh, mega cities particularly those in europe um, and they need to consider how to best kind of avoid that situation because it can because it can lead to a lot of tension um, and a lot of issues beyond the scope of just finance those are just some of those general ideas. Um, if you guys are, are interested in finding out some more stuff, by all means, head to our website, and that's lanternaeducation.com. Um, and by all means, email me, just liam at lanternaeducation.com. Uh, We've got some really good resources online. We've got some tutors available to help you guys out. Uh, but I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and then in a minute, I'm going to move on to some of that uh, climate change based stuff.